Okay, so we once again find ourselves at the vulnerability to exploit cut line. We are no longer discussing the nature of the vulnerability. We already covered that. We know how type confusion works. Now we're discussing how specifically this type confusion was exploited in the wild by real attackers. So as I said before, they didn't choose to go for the use after free approach. Instead, they tried an out of bound right approach. And that was possible thanks to some friendly helper functions that we're going to meet now. Helper function one is called HM validate handle. And this is an unexported function, meaning that a normal piece of software from third party developers cannot actually look up and call this function. And what the function does is that if given a handle to an object in the Windows GUI object sense of the word, not the C++ object sense of the word, if given a handle to such an object, it will copy that object from kernel space heap into the user space heap. This is again because the code used to run in user space a long, long time ago, got moved to kernel space. But for efficiency purposes, if there's going to be a lot of processing of some sort of window object or GUI object in user space, then it'll just copy it over so that it doesn't have to bounce back and forth between user space and kernel space while it's being processed. Now, despite this being an unexported function, there is a well-known technique amongst attackers for searching assembly of a function that is known to call this function and finding the address of the function based on that. The basic procedure is to use some functions like load library, where you can specify a dynamic length library, a DLL, and that'll give you the base memory address of the DLL in memory, then get proc address for some specific function that you know calls this function, and that'll give you the address of that function in memory. And then once you have that, then you just loop through and you check, is there a call assembly instruction? So again, you're not supposed to know assembly for purposes of this class, but just to give you a sense, if the attacker could look up where the address of this is menu is, and if they know that that thing calls this HM validate handle very early on, then they can just go, is this E8, is this E8, is this E8, et cetera, and they loop forward until they find the literal byte E8 because they know that has to do with a call assembly instruction, and then they calculate based on this relative address that they know will be the next four bytes basically relative to this next assembly address, that will be the offset. That'll be a way to calculate the actual absolute address for HM validate handle. Once they have the absolute address, then they can just call it freely from within their code. What they're going to use that unexported function for is leaking some information from kernel space about these tag window K type structures. So what I want to introduce here that we haven't covered before is that at offset eight of the kernel portion, the tag window kernel version, there's going to be an offset from the kernel heap base into the heap that this particular tag window K can be found. So if for instance, this data structure was hex 300 in, then that hex 300 would exist at offset eight. It's actually a larger value, but for our purposes, we're just gonna simplify it and say, you know, it's always gonna be this hex 300. It's gonna tell you how far in you can find this structure within the kernel heap. And then just as a reminder, offsets were used in, you know, if this particular thing had this DW extra flag bit 11 set, then the P extra bytes would also be an offset relative to the start of this kernel desktop heap that's used to store these sort of Windows data structures. And so here I'm showing it as 600, for instance, and a size of 100. Okay, so what's the attacker gonna do with this? First, we're just gonna say they're gonna call create window X normally. So there's nothing special here. They're not gonna be invoking the vulnerable code path. They're just gonna call it normally and it's going to cause the creation of tag windows, tag windows Ks, et cetera. And we're gonna mostly focus on the tag window K for most of this um, viewing and discussion of the exploit. So if it was at offset 300, then, you know, if it's just a normal invocation and it hasn't been, you know, magically swapped over to being the kernel style allocation, then by default, the user space allocation will occur and there'll be a pointer to that because the attacker didn't do anything special there. All right, now they're going to create another window and that is again, just a plain window, user space allocation, but you know, they're trying to set something up here. They're gonna be trying to set up some relative rights so that these things can clobber each other. All right, now they want to leak the window zero offset in kernel space. And to do that, they call the HM validate handle on handle zero. And what that's going to do is it's going to cause the kernel to copy a sanitized copy of this into user space. 
So from this, basically, they will now be able to know that this kernel version of it is at offset 300 in the kernel. And they do the same thing on the second handle, handle one, copies it into user space. And now we have known offsets in user space, which basically the attacker can use to know where these things are relative to the base of the kernel heap. So they're going to use that later with a relative write. But for now, we're going to create a new window. This is going to be the malicious window. This is going to be the one that invokes the type confusion path. So they've already got these set up. They've already got some known offsets for these other ones. Then they're going to create a new one. So create window X. It's going to create a tag window K and all the attendant things. But again, as a reminder, here's our sequence diagram. You create the window, calls XXX, create window X, calls into kernel space. If the CB window extra is non-null, then it'll call back to user space. Well, the attacker controls that value, so it's going to guarantee to call back to user space. And then the attacker is already hooked to this function. They've redirected it so that they control it and do arbitrary code in user space. And they're going to call NT user console control, which calls into kernel space at XXX console control. And all that they care about is that this is going to cause an allocation, which will get set into P extra bytes and then flip the bit, bit 11, in DW extra flag that is going to say interpret this as a relative offset instead of a pointer offset, which is what it would have expected coming back from user space. So that was fundamentally our type confusion. And then finally, when the NT callback return returns a fully attacker controlled value, that is going to ultimately overwrite the P extra bytes with an acid value. Okay, so in the context of this picture, what's happening? They already have these two windows. They call create window X again. They invoke the malicious path. They've got this thing hooked so that they can run arbitrary code here. They call NT user console control. That calls into kernel space. And what does that do? Well, one thing it does is that it sets DW extra flag. It sets the flag 11 there. So I've shown this as sassy instead of fully attacker controlled because it's just you know, whatever the flags already were, it's adding in that single bit 11. And then also at some offset in the kernel heap, it's going to set the P extra bytes equal to that offset. So that is not an attacker controlled offset. That is not an attacker controlled allocation at this point. It's just something that occurred in kernel space. But then back here, when it does the NT callback return with hex 300 as the attacker controlled value, that will now all of a sudden become a fully acid attacker controlled p extra bytes value and so it's set to 300 it's going to be treated as an offset and so that's kind of an interesting value right where do we get that value 300 is what i've put as my placeholder value as the offset to this tag window zero and so they know the tag window zero starts there at offset 300 how did they find that? Well, it was set as 300 at offset 8 in the data structure, and that data structure got leaked out to user space when they called the HM validate handle. So the attacker specifically chose 300 because they want this particular window to treat the extra bytes that instead of being this just safe allocation that's going to be, you know, sanity checked based on whatever the size is, now all of a sudden, instead of reads and writes occurring from within this buffer, reads and writes are going to occur from within this, which is clearly not extra bytes. That's a data structure that is going to get clobbered. All right, so now we have to introduce our helper functions two and three. So there is set window long w, and it takes a handle for a particular window, an index, which is really an offset into the extra bytes, and a d word new long. And this is basically going to write a long value, which here means a 32-bit value, at an offset starting from whichever window handle you specify, it's going to, the source code behind the scenes is going to go into tag window, tag window K, and P extra bytes, and it's going to assume that that's going to be pointing, you know, at a offset into the extra bytes that have been allocated, and it's going to write this value at that offset. There's also a version of this set window long pointer A, and this one, the only difference is that it's going to write a pointer size thing. So if you're on a 32-bit operating system, it's writing 32 bits. If you're on a 64-bit operating system, you're writing 64 bits. But otherwise, it operates the same way in that it's going to take this window handle. It's going to behind the scenes, go tag window, tag window K, P extra bytes. It's going to treat that as an offset. It's going to add in this index as another offset. And then even though this is also called D word new long, 
it could be 32 or it could be 64 bits. So the normal non-malicious version of this is that if you're calling set window long, if you're calling it on handle zero with a given offset and the literal long value that you want to write, what it would normally do is it would say, okay, let me offset this far into this extra bytes area and then write the specific long value that you asked me to write. But returning to this malicious situation that we've got set up now, instead of p extra bytes pointing at just some allocation that occurred in kernel space, it is at 300. It is whatever the offset is that the attacker has set it to to make sure that it offsets into this existing data structure. And that means now all of a sudden, if we call set window long w with the handle set to the tag window handle for this malicious version that's been overwritten using the type confusion, and then if you set it at some offset in there, you're really offsetting in and you're getting to pick some field of this data structure and clobber it with an arbitrary value that you control. So that is going to cause a relative write. Boom, acid value. Now you have a capability to clobber these data structures in memory. And you've unlocked the relative write primitive. Okay, so let's see that again. We have set window long, handle malicious, C8 offset, 0, 0, 0, FFFF. Then, so that is basically, it's as, the, the way the set window long works is that it says for whatever handle, it's going to go to P extra bytes forward, and then it's going to say, okay, that plus this offset, C8, because it thinks it's in, you know, just some allocation, plus C8, write this value, and now this is an attacker controlled value. So if they do sequential versions of this, then basically they can just clobber any of these fields with any values they want. So why did they choose, you know, zero FFF instead of maximum size, you know, maximum positive size or, or maximum maximum size? I don't actually know the reason to this. There may be some sanity checking going on there, but uh, for, for the purposes of the attack, it doesn't actually matter as we'll see in a second. Because the next thing the attacker is going to do is they're going to call set window long pointer A. Again, this was pointer size values. They're going to again call it on handle malicious. So it'll start from this offset 300, which is the tag window. They're going to go to offset 128, which is this P extra bytes. And then they're going to write a literal value 300. So boom, offset 128, write a literal value 300. And now we've got an interesting situation because basically... We've updated this handle so that essentially this has a really giant size because, you know, normally this set window long is going to be using that size as like a sanity check to make sure you're not going out of bounds of your allocation. So now all of a sudden this tag window has a giant size and it's got an arbitrary offset. You know, here they've just set it to 300 to kind of point back at itself. So now in the future, if the attacker calls these set window long functions, with a handle of zero, of this one, then all of a sudden they're going to be able to write anywhere within this amount of memory from this. And so this, for all intents and purposes, is an arbitrary write. So in practice, you know, theoretically, sanity checks on this CB window size would, you know, make it so that, you know, in this particular case, like I said, they used zero FFFF instead of just maximum F, so they don't theoretically have the full, you know, four gigabyte range. But if for whatever reason this thing was, you know, trying to go too large of an area, then they could basically just move the P extra bytes forward and they still would be able to access any memory anywhere. So, boom, the attacker now has an arbitrary write primitive. But in order to make for a reliable exploit, because we've got kernel address space layout randomization, they need to have a way to defeat address space layout randomization. And the typical way that attackers do that is they want to find something like an arbitrary read primitive so that they can read things to make sure that, you know, sanity check, make sure everything's right before they write to it. Right? Everything's correct before they write to it. So that brings us to our next helper function. Helper function four is get menu bar info. And so this is a function that normally reads information about a menu bar, right? So you've, we're dealing with like literal windows here, windows that are the square things displayed. It's going to get information about the menu bar that goes at the top of window. Now, the menu bar that is going to be of interest here is that in this picture of the overall tag window structure that's in kernel space, even though there's, you know, this kernel specific portion that's a sub portion of it, 
the overall tag window structure has you know some thread info some other stuff that will be relevant later has this kernel tag window k and then at offset a8 in the overall tag window there is a tag menu thing so basically we're going to want to manipulate this in order to use this function get menu bar info in order to cause some reading of information not about a menu bar but about a completely faked data structure so that's what this says right here we're going to fake a tag menu object and then use get menu bar to read arbitrary locations so i'm going to introduce a slight variant on my previous picture here i've just chopped down the tag window k1 so i'm going to add in this new dw style field uh, and i've dropped the dw extra and the cb wind extra and the p extra bytes so there's going to be a call to set window long pointer a on handle zero so this is the one that has the sort of arbitrary write capabilities it's going to pass an offset of 1100 hex plus 18 and where that comes from is basically we're assuming that this tag window one is at 1400 the tag window zero is at 300 so it's going to do 1400 minus 300 that's basically going to be the offset from tag window zero to tag window one and then plus 18 gets us to this dw style field and what it's going to write there is the current dw style so this value right here that they saw leaked out it's going to take the current value and then it's going to xor it with this four and zero 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 and all that's really saying is that we need to set the dw style we need to or in this field that's called ws child so this is essentially making tag window one a quote unquote child window as far as some other functions are going to be concerned so again current dw style is found by looking at the leaked version of the tag window k and it xors that in it does offset 1400 minus 300 plus 18 that gets to dw style and then boom this is now a attacker controlled value and the only reason for doing this is because for the next function that it's going to call that function needs to have had this ws child set in the style in order to use a magical version of it all right now i've introduced the tag window one that the it would have a pointer to tag window k one so most of the time we said we didn't you know in this in this vulnerability exploitation for the most part we didn't care about those tag windows that were enclosing things but for the ne next function call we are going to care about that and we're really going to only care about that field right there the sp menu but just for accuracy and to keep things straight i wanted to show that the offset 28 of the tag window points at the tag window k and that's the things that we've been dealing with thus far and all of these other windows have that as well i just chose to not show it for lack of space essentially so what the attacker is going to do is they're going to make a fake tag menu so this is going to be a thing an object of type tag menu and that sp menu again is of type tag menu they're going to call set window long pointer a but there's going to be a special magic form of it they're going to call it on handle one but there's a special option negative 12 for the offset so this offset field is a signed field and so the attacker passes negative 12 which will take a special meaning and so behind the scenes what happens if you give negative 12 on a particular thing is it'll basically overwrite the sp menu with a pointer to an attacker controlled menu so they created this menu data structure here in user space they're going to pass the address of that data structure by passing argument negative 12 for the offset the set window long in kernel space will say oh you know what i'm actually supposed to go find that sp menu field and i'm going to overwrite the value with the fake tag menu address but importantly for later it's also going to return the address that was already there so this value right here some kernel address that's something the attacker doesn't know at this point and by overwriting it they will have it actually returned back and they will leak that information that will be helpful to them later so that some kernel address gets returned back to the attacker in user space and then the malicious fake tag menu will be written in here so subsequently now when the get menu bar info is going to be called the kernel is going to be operating on a data structure out here in user space that the attacker controls and subsequently it's going to lead to capability to you know control a particular pointer in here which will allow them to read information from kernel space 
All right, so as I said, setting the WS child in the previous step was required in order to do this negative 12 version of set window long pointer A. And also because it returns the value that was already there, they've leaked some kernel address for where the menu originally pointed, which will be useful to them. All right, well, what does the attacker do now? Well, the attacker has to read the get menu bar info code. And here's an example of the decompiled code from one of the references. And you can kind of see the sizes were different. So I'm pretty sure this was chopped right here. And the reason I'm pretty sure is because I looked at another reference that had decompiled code. And this one's a little clearer. And basically you can see then the full control flow here. The relevant thing about this code is that inside get menu bar info, if you pass an argument of negative three as the second one, you will hit this switch statement. And if you pass one as that argument, you will hit this if, so this will be one just as long as it's non-zero. And so the actual reading of arbitrary memory will occur down in this path and this path. So the important part right here is right here. Basically, attacker will customize the data structure in a way that this allows them to read a particular memory. It'll go back into some particular menu bar info data structure that they have you know, passed the address of. And so in user space, they will be able to see this read that occurred in kernel space of an arbitrary location that they set up based on a customized data structure. So again, this is just kind of, you know, to say that these special arguments get you into this control flow path where the thing is going to be, you know, working its way through data structure. We're not going to care exactly about, you know, what offset goes to what offset goes to what offset. I'll show you a picture in a second. But basically, it's working its way through a data structure, trying to find something, and then it's trying to read something out of that data structure. But because it's actually now operating on this fake structure that the attacker controlled, it's ultimately going to go and read wherever the attacker wanted them to read. So this is what the data structure looks like, this fake SP menu in user space, which is of size A0. At offset 98, there's some unknown structure type, and at offset zero of that, it's this structure type, and at offset 58 of that is going to be the location which the attacker puts the address that they want to read, and then when kernel space is working its way through these data structures, it's basically going to read from whatever address you put there at offset zero and offset eight. And that information will be passed back into the menu bar info. And so they can, the attacker in user space can just read it out of the menu bar info. And in so doing, they have essentially created an arbitrary read primitive. <laughs> Yep, so arbitrary read primitive, get menu bar info, special form with negative three and one, the address of your user space, uh, pointer to your menu bar info, and then you can get back this arbitrary info. And like I said before, the negative three is just to get to a particular case, and the one is also. Okay, so what now? The attacker has arbitrary read, arbitrary write. What are they going to do with it? Well, in this particular case, again, this is real exploit in the wild. What did the attackers actually do? They chose to do a privilege escalation exploit. And the way they did that is that they changed out the security token for the process in which the exploit ran. So basically on Windows, you have process ID four, which is a system process and it has maximum privileges. This security token is basically a representation of all the privileges a process can have. And so the system token has all the privs and so the attacker goes and they have to find a data structure that has this particular token and then they read it out and then they write it into their own process and now all of a sudden as far as the system's concerned their process is the maximum privilege process so how do they do this well recall that in the set window long pointer a with the special magic negative 12 version where they overwrote the pointer to the tag menu structure the some kernel address had a particular kernel address that was the existing menu information. Now, that existing information was this thing at offset A8 inside of a tag window. But the interesting thing here is that inside of that structure, the A8 structure, at offset 50 is a pointer actually back up to the enclosing tag window. And the tag window has some more juicy information such as thread info and thread info environment block and E process information. So what's going to happen? The attacker has leaked to this address and they have an arbitrary read and arbitrary write primitive. So they're going to take that address and they're going to read it. 
what they're going to find is this data structure. And at offset 50 into that data structure, they will find a pointer back to this tag window data structure. All right, so the original thing, they got a kernel address, offset 50 in there, and that's going to give them a pointer back to the tag window structure. At offset 10 inside of that is the thread info structure. And at offset zero inside of that is going to be the ethread information, offset zero inside of that. Like, I think this picture just left off one of those offset zeros, and that's fine. Offset zero inside of that is going to be the K thread. At offset 220 inside the K thread is ultimately going to be the E process. And so this is a very important data structure in Windows kernel. It manages the core information for all the different processes. And so some of the information that's in there is that the active process links is a linked list between all the other e-process structures for all the other processes. And in having this information here and being able to read it with their arbitrary read primitive, they can pull pointers out of that linked list. And so if this is the e-process for their particular process themselves, then they can walk the linked list in order to find any other process. And so when they're walking the linked list, what are they gonna be looking for? Well, they're going to be looking, you know, they'll move to the next E process, then they'll look at offset 2E8, and they'll say, are you the system process? Do you have a PID process ID of 4? If you're not, keep walking. If so, then cool, somewhere inside of there, and it differs between operating systems, all these offsets, you know, differ between operating systems. But somewhere in there, we'll say offset 360 is going to be the security token. And so when they walk their way through the linked list and they eventually find the system process ID for data structure, then they go and find the token offset 360 and they read that out and then they go back and they write it to their own process. And now all of a sudden they are maximally privileged process. So they've privilege escalated and created a maximally privileged process. And from there they can do anything that they want. So that is the long and the short of the exploit, and I know it's more long than short, but I thought it was interesting because this particular reference, the McAfee write-up, they broke down what was known and what was not known. So they said, you know, tag window is known, using hmvalidate handle is a known trick, using the set window long and pointer, that's a known trick, using tag window to uh, overwrite the menu is a trick, and hooking the process environment block uh, callback table in order to change out the values for user space callbacks is a known trick. And I would also add in this eProcess token swap is a known trick that is often used for privilege escalation as sort of the last step of an exploit. So that was interesting. Here are all the known primitives. So all of that right there, those are things that, you know, if you are a vulnerability hunter and you're working your way towards the exploitation course, all of that is stuff that, you know, you will see over and over between different exploits. Those are all exploit primitives that attackers use in order to achieve privilege escalation. The new primitives that have been added by the attacker here are the use of NT user control console in order to cause the type confusion in the context of this create, process, uh, create window X and the use of get menu bar info to perform an arbitrary read. So again, you know, exploit primitives are like, you know, simple machines. There are things that basically you combine a bunch of simple machines to make a complex machine. And if one of those things gets, you know, taken away, then you need to replace it with an equivalent thing, but then your complex machine will be back to working. 